Hey guys, Joe here from TTA Performance. And as some of you uh, know, we offer a carb rebuilding service for the Quadrajet carburetors on the 8081-301 Turbo. Um, we've been getting some carburetors in lately that have been damaged in shipping. We're shooting this video mainly to go over uh, what I like to do when shipping a carburetor to make sure that it is protected and that it doesn't get damaged in transit. So I'm gonna go over some things about the carburetors, what to look out for, what we're trying to protect, uh, and the proper way to box it so that it does stay protected. So I have two carburetors here. The first thing we're gonna go over is we want to verify what carburetor you have. These cars do, uh, from time to time in their past lives, they had the carburetor replaced, somebody swapped it out for something else, uh, or a Quadrajet that was off of a different car. Uh, so first thing we want to do is just verify that you have the correct carburetor for your car before sending it off to us. I've got a couple carburetors right here, so let's take a look at them and we'll identify some things. So here we have two carburetors. Uh, we have an 81 and an 80. Now there are differences between them and we'll get into that in a second. Um, they're both Quadrajet, Rochester Quadrajet carburetors, also called the Q-Jet. And the first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you have the correct part number. So the part number that we're looking for is actually on the driver's side of the carburetor and it's right behind the secondary linkage. There is a number that is stamped into the body and it's stamped in vertically. Now this 1980 uh, carburetor, the part number is going to be 17080274. And this will actually tell us the year also. So the last five digits of the part number 80274, the 80 means 80, that's the year. Uh, 274, that identifies it as a 1980 uh, 301 turbo carburetor. Now, the 81 carburetor uh, is a little bit different, but the part number is still in the same spot. This one's 17081273. So those last five digits being 81273, 81, 81 meaning 81, 273 is identifying it as a 301 turbo carburetor. Now, there's going to be a difference when it comes to 81. 80, they're all the same. But in 1981, you had two versions of the 301 turbo engine. Uh, the first one being the US spec car is what I call it. Basically, it's a 301 uh, turbocharged Trans Am or formula that was sold here in the United States. Those carburetors are going to be what we call the electronic feedback carburetor, or some people call it the 3C or the triple C. Uh, computer command control is what it would stand for. And that carburetor actually has uh, your mixture control solenoid on top. It also has a throttle position sensor in it. Uh, it's an electronic feedback carb. It also has this air bleed on top that's an adjustment. Usually uh, a factory one would be capped off. If the carb's been rebuilt at all, this will, the cap will be removed. Now, that's for the U.S. spec version. There are 81 Trans Ams and formulas with the turbo engine that were exported to Canada. Now those export cars have a different carburetor because they did not get the computer command control or the, the feedback, electronic feedback carburetor. Their carburetor is gonna look more like the 80 version, uh, being all mechanical, but the part number on it is gonna be different. I don't know the part number off the top of my head, but it's still gonna be an 81 carb. So the, the, the 81 is still gonna be there. The last three digits, they're gonna be something else. Don't get too confused thinking that, oh, it might be the wrong carb. If you have uh, a, a Canadian export Trans Am, turbo Trans Am, it, it has an 81 style part number, but there's no electronic devices on it, it could be the correct carburetor. So looking at the differences also between them, we, both are actually going to be electric choke. That's what the, the wire is on the side. Um, again, we were talking about the electronic uh, inputs. The... Another identifier is going to be the fuel inlet. The first thing that you'll notice on the car, you can actually see this when it's bolted to the engine, air cleaner's on, you can see where the fuel inlet comes in. Straight in is what we're looking for. If you open the hood on a car, maybe you're looking at one that's for sale or you just bought one or whatever, and you see that the fuel inlet is actually facing to the passenger side at a 90 degree angle, that's going to be a Chevrolet style carburetor. I can guarantee you it's the wrong one for the car. This will identify right away uh, if you have the correct carburetor uh, before you even get to the part number. So on the side of the carb, we have what we call the choke pull-offs. There's actually two of them on the carburetor. We have the primary choke pull-off up front, 
and then we have the secondary choke pull-off in the back. The secondary choke pull-off is just there in case the front one fails. It's really not needed back here. Um, but it's on there. We'll keep it on there. Uh, the linkages are actually different between them. But those are the choke pull-offs. And, and there's, I'll get into why I'm actually pointing that out because that's kind of important when we're dealing with shipping this, this carburetor. Um, also, these carburetors have what we call a vacuum tree on the back. This one has it on there. This sticks out pretty far. Uh, there's a lot of vacuum ports on there. Um, you, this is... <laughs> This is uh, something that is a little tricky to find because it's specific to the turbo car having all these ports and everything. So why are we bringing all that up? Well, there's certain things on the carburetor that I do not need for the rebuild. And it'll make it easier to package it. It'll make it uh, easier to put into the box. And there's uh, less probability that something could come in contact with the side of the box and actually rip the box open. So what are those things that we don't need? Uh, parts that are not needed carburetor. I call it the carb stud or the air cleaner stud. This just this can be unscrewed. You might need a pair of pliers to take it out. We don't need this. Keep it with you. The other thing that we don't need. In 1980, we have the idle solenoid. Uh, this is to raise the idle when the air conditioning is on. It's just a single wire. That's all it did was when you turn the AC on, it would bump this little solenoid out and it would bump the idle up because the load of the AC compressor on the engine could drop the idle too low or even cause it to stall. So um, they would put this on there. Now, it's also the part of the bracket for the throttle return spring. These two parts I don't need. You can keep those with you. Remove the spring, take out the two bolts, take off the solenoid, no problem. 81 doesn't have this style solenoid. <clears throat> 81 has what they called the idle speed control motor. And it's this big bulky thing and it kind of rattles and whatever. And this was supposed to be what the computer was using to set the idle speed. Um, it's also supposed to be on a really big bracket. I don't have the bracket uh, with me, but it would actually be on using the same bolt holes on the side of the carburetor and it would come up and it would bump the idle that way. Another component that I don't need. So I would recommend that you keep that with you also. The secondary choke pull off. You can remove that also. I don't need this as part of the rebuild. Um, it would be best if you removed it, again, make the packaging easier. Okay, with everything stripped down on the carburetor to the things that we don't need, now we can look into trying to package it. So you want to find a suitable box, and, and you want to get a box that's big enough that it's going to give you plenty of area around the carburetor, but also top and bottom. You don't want, some, you don't want a box that's like barely going to make the carburetor fit in there. You want to make sure that the box is tall enough and mainly here's the main reason why when you look at the bottom of the carb or you even look at it from the side you can see that the linkage hangs down really far past the throttle the base plate and what ends up happening we even have it on the choke side the choke side is also kind of hanging down a little bit also so we what we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure that nothing on the carburetor comes in contact with the sides or the top or the bottom of the box that's critical. I've gotten a lot of the carburetors come in and they were kind of in the box, half packed and, and kind of loose. And they hit the, this hits the bottom of whatever it gets thrown on the ground and whatever. And it'll actually bend this linkage up. This linkage will bend up, it'll bend back. And it really makes it difficult to straighten out. Not only that, it could damage the base plate where the throttle shaft is actually going through uh, into the, the bushings there and everything, it, it'll actually crack that. Now the base plate's no good. Um, to give you, I got an example of what one looks like that came in damaged. <clears throat> Here we have an 81 carburetor that was shipped to us, and you can see right there that the linkage is bent back. Um, you can see that, let me try to get it in focus better, that it's actually bent up also. This one was heavily damaged. It also took damage on the throttle position sensor, which we replaced this anyway. We always put a new one in for an 81 carb. And then it also damaged the choke housing. But again, we replaced the choke housing with a new one also. But this is what we're trying to avoid. It actually took damage on the choke linkage also and, and tweaked it there uh, in, in shipping. So that's what we're trying to avoid. So 
we'll move on to finding a box. Uh, a, a, this one happens to be a really nice one. It's double, double walled. It's very thick. Um, you don't want the Amazon boxes or anything like that because they're pretty thin and they don't, they don't tend to be to hold up. So we got this nice robust box. It happens to be 15 by 15. It's about 11 inches deep. Um, you always want to err to the side of bigger rather than small. We don't want things to be in there really tight or really close to the edges and so on. And we'll place this carburetor in here, kind of show, yeah, plenty of room. We don't have anything that's really close to the edges, which is good. Um, I am not going to set this carburetor on the bottom of the box like this. This is what happens. I'll get carburetors that are sent to me, and even if they got a little bit of padding on the bottom, that linkage is sitting on the edge of the box. And the minute they drop this thing, this thing is about 11 pounds just by itself. The minute they drop it, the minute they toss it, whatever they do, it's going to go right through the bottom of the box. It's going to make contact with the ground, with the bottom of the truck, whatever it is, and it's going to bend the linkage. So what do we do about that, and what kind of packing material should we use? Paper grocery bags. So you just go to your local grocery store, you get your typical paper grocery bag, you take it, you open it up, and you ball it up. Now, it's a nice, thicker paper. When you got it balled up like this, it's pretty robust. It's not going to squish and flatten and so on. And I'm going to place a bunch of these in the bottom of the box first. And mainly what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to build it up so that that linkage is not nowhere near the bottom of the box. And I'm trying to get it under the base plate to support the carburetor from the bottom of the base plate. Now, another thing you could do is actually take a piece of two by four a chunk of two by four and, and put that at the bottom of the box or maybe even wire it to the bottom of the carburetor to try to suspend that linkage from ever coming near the bottom of the box. So you can never have too much of this in there. You want to you know, compress it down and so on. But mainly what we're after is that once we put the carburetor in there, you can see it's, it's, it's nice and tight as far as it's not going to, I can push down on it, but I'm not, I'm not making anywhere near contact with the bottom of the box. So that's good. So now we got it suspended vertically. So I'm going to take more uh, paper grocery bags and now I'm going to stuff real tight all around the linkage, all around and just protect all these extremities coming off the sides of it and everything to make sure that they don't get damaged and that they don't come through uh, with the box. We got some more, uh, paper grocery bags that we're crumpling up nice and tight and we're going to start putting them like in the corners and on the edges. You know, get under the stuff if you have to, lift it, you know, place it in there. We want it constrained and tight, you know, and just make it so that it doesn't want to move. It's the, some of the materials that you definitely don't want to use, newspaper, way too thin. You don't want to be using that. Bubble wrap is another one that we don't want to use. Uh, bubble wrap, the, the, the item's so heavy that if it does get jostled around, it's going to pop the bags and now you're going to lose your containment. The other thing, and I hate these things with a passion, is these airbags. A lot of, lot of companies like to throw these in there, you know, and they'll put like a whole bunch of them in there and everything. And these things pop so easily with this heavy carburetor and the sharp edges and everything that I've gotten them to where the, the carburetor is no longer contained in the box. It's flopping all around inside there and there's just a bunch of flat... Uh, plastic bags in the bottom so no don't use those um, if you got foam foam would work uh, styrofoam if you want to fold up some uh, cardboard and place it in the corners and edges that helps too uh, but you know the paper grocery bag thing as long as they're balled up nice and tight they seem to work pretty well again we're just we're trying to contain it as much as possible we don't want it we don't want it to move in the box You never have too much of it in there. <laughs> Stuff it down in there. You know, and if you see that it's bulging the box out a little bit, that's fine. Actually, I'd rather prefer that because that means everything's contained nice and tight. So we're going to keep boxing this up and keep padding it. I'll put even more on there. I want it to be heaving over the top a little bit so that when I do close up the flap, you know, if I were to leave this like this right now, this, this is actually not enough because I can actually push down on the center of the box. And that's going to be a problem because now the carburetor can move. It can actually float around. If it can float around, it's going to start matting everything down and, and uh, flattening stuff. And it's going to create more and more room as it moves. That's what we're trying to avoid. Now, the last thing that you want to do 
before you tape up, seal up the box, is make sure that you put your contact info in here so I know this is your carburetor and how to get a hold of you then. Place that in there. I do recommend that you contact us first. There are different lead times depending on how busy things get with carburetors coming in. So contact us first, tell us that you're gonna be sending your carb, describe to us what's going on with it, if you're having any issues or not, if there's anything that's seized or, or broken or anything like that. Uh, even if you can email us with a picture of the carburetor of what it looks like, that helps out too. But that's what we're looking to have done. Hopefully, if you're watching this video, you're thinking about sending your, uh, us your carburetor, it's gonna come to us with no damage. It's gonna be perfect. We're gonna get it rebuilt for you and it's gonna be running great. So that about wraps it up. About wraps it up. Wraps it up. For how to, how to package up your carburetor. Hopefully you see this before you do send it to us. Uh, this way then we can receive the carburetor with no damage, get it rebuilt for you, get it back to you. So uh, appreciate you guys uh, checking out the video and we'll see you next time.